Keep it on the dotted line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America. Nothing praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. Nothing in for a Today on Liberty's Kids. Look, a farm! We won't be stopping at that farm, Sarah. They're slaves. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Mother, the mood in the colonies has turned ugly. Parliament has placed the port of Boston under blockade as punishment for the Tea Party. With the harbor closed to trade, the subjects of Boston are idle and suffer greatly. Tensions are on the rise. Dr. Franklin's printing press is working round the clock to keep up with all these events. Moses, it did it again! This old thing is a hunk of junk. <clears throat> How are we supposed to get out the latest news from Boston if our press keeps breaking down? James, this poor old press is ready for retirement. However, I have just a fix. Great. What do you need? A wrench? A hammer? I'll fetch it for you. A wagon. A what? A big, sturdy wagon. I made an offer on a new press. We just have to pick it up. Great! Where is it? Market Street? Williamsburg. Williamsburg? Williamsburg, Virginia? We leave at the first flight of day. But, but... But nothing. We must have a dependable press. The people count on us for their news. Besides, you never can tell what news you'll uncover in a different colony. Yes, but is it safe? I mean, for you? Slavery is everywhere in Virginia. It's not at all like Boston or even here in Pennsylvania. These are dangerous times for everyone, and I'm willing to do what I can for the common cause. I won't be without some protection. I have this letter from Dr. Franklin. It attests that I am a free man. I carry it with me, always. Moses, if the colonies had 10,000 men as brave as you, Parliament wouldn't dare mess with us. Speaking of mess... Right. Where's the soap? You don't know? Well, let's see. I used it just last Saturday. More like last January. Still working at this hour? Sarah, Henri, big news! I'm going with Moses to Virginia to buy a new printing press. And leave me here alone with her? And leave me here alone with him? I'm, I'm going, going with you. you. I hope this new press is worth the money, Moses. As Dr. Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned. This press will save us a very pretty penny. How much longer till we get to Williamsburg? Yeah, I'm hungry. You're always hungry. I hope we get there in time for the session of the House of Burgesses. I want to hear Patrick Henry speak. Patrick who? Patrick Henry. He's a lawyer from Virginia. He was a delegate to the First Continental Congress. And what a speaker. Don't tell me this Patrick Henry is a rebel. He's not a rebel, Sarah. He's a patriot. He wants the southern colonies to join the common cause with New England. Why would a subject of Virginia care what's happening in Massachusetts? It's a completely different country. With men like Patrick Henry, it might just become one country. Look, a farm! Whoa! <laughs> Those workers will know how far it is to Williamsburg. We won't be stopping at that farm, Sarah. Why not? Because those workers aren't just workers. They're slaves. 
let's go. Lady Phillips, how grand to see you again. Dr. Franklin, you're leaving us? The rumor is true, Lady Phillips. As soon as I tie up my affairs here in London, I will return to my home, to Philadelphia, to America. Oh, Doctor, you will be missed. By my friends, perhaps, but my enemies are in far greater numbers. And if they shed tears upon my departure, they shall be tears of joy. What word have you from your lovely daughter, Sarah? She's off on a trip to Williamsburg, which is the capital of the colony of Virginia, I believe. Does she say why? I haven't had a letter in some weeks now. Something about buying a new printing press. I take comfort knowing she's in the company of your people, James and Henri, and your major domo, Moses. Moses, you say? Is there something wrong? Perhaps not, but perhaps so. This must be Williamsburg. I smell ham. Ooh, I also smell mutton, roast beef, pudding, and pie. I love Williamsburg. Henri, you're part bloodhound. It is quite beautiful, civilized. It reminds me of the English countryside. So. Oh my goodness, is that? Yes, Sarah, the auction block. This is where my people are sold like cattle to the highest bidder. I was sold on the block in Charlestown, South Carolina, but they're all the same. It's barbaric. I cannot look at it, not another second. I want to leave this place. The newspaper office is right across the street. Come on, Moses, let's pick up the printing press and get out of here. No, James, you're a journalist. You have a job to do. I'll get the printing press. You get yourself over to the House of Burgesses and find out the latest news. But... No buts. Each of us must do his part. Is it safe here for you, Moses? As long as I have this letter, I'll be fine. Come on, Henri. Do you want something to eat? No. Suddenly, I've lost my appetite. That's strange. It's locked. In the middle of the day? Here goes. Huh? <sighs> Up you go. <sighs> ah! Ah! <sighs> Ouch. Where is everybody? Gone. Gone? Gone where? There is no more House of Burgesses. The Earl of Dunmore shut it down. The Earl of who? The Earl of Dunmore. He's the royal governor of Virginia. He got mighty mad at the assembly, especially Mr. Patrick Henry, for saying Virginia should raise an army to fight with the Boston people. Now that's news. Are you sure? I hear everything. Rumor has it, Mr. Henry's going to speak to a convention in Richmond, St. John's Church. That's fantastic. Thanks. What is your name? Oh, no. I've said too much already. Wait till Moses hears this. <laughs> Moses! Big news! We've got to go to Richmond! The Earl of Dunmore sent the assembly home, but they're going to meet anyway in Richmond. Patrick Henry's going to make an important speech. This is news. We'd better get going. Yep. What's wrong, Moses? That's what's wrong. He looks scared. He's my brother. He's your brother? His name is Cato. We were separated when we were young, but I'd know him anywhere. We have to do something. Yes, but what? We can buy his freedom. With what? We spent all our money on the printing press. I have some coins. I'll sell this horse and wagon and carry the press home on my back if I must. But I'll not sit here while Cato is sold like a sack of flour. He's 
a captured runaway. High-spirited, so we'll have to be watched carefully. Who'll start the bidding? 50 pounds. I have 50 pounds. Do I hear 60? 60 pounds. I have 60. Do I hear 70 pounds? Stop the auction. This is most peculiar. You aren't allowed to bid at auction. My offer stands, sir. 60 pounds, cash money. This is outrageous, the nerve! The man you are selling is my brother, Cato. I am a free man and have as much right to bid as any. He speaks the truth, sir. Quiet, child. It's bad enough I'm talking to him. I'll not stoop to discussing my affairs with a girl to boot. Oh, I'd like to give him the boot. Moses is a free man. Show him your letter, Moses. It's from my employer, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. I don't need no reading lessons. Ben Franklin's name don't mean nothing in Virginia. He's a Pennsylvania man. If you belong to him, I suggest you get. And I mean now! Moses, no! Stay calm! Get him out of here! <laughs> My bid stands at 50 pounds. 50 pounds, going once, going twice. Sold to Foreman Harrison of the Abernathy Plantation, Richmond, Virginia. <sighs> Richmond, that's where Patrick Henry is speaking. Come on. <sighs> Moses, Cato was sold to the Abernathy Plantation. In Richmond. We are going to Richmond, aren't we, Moses? As if we had wings. There's St. John's Church. That's where Mr. Henry's going to speak. You stay here and listen to his speech while I find Cato. The Abernathy Plantation is just outside of town. We passed it coming in. I'll draw less attention on foot. Meet Cato and me here after dark. Please let us go with you, Moses. This is family, Sarah. I have to do this for my brother. Now make sure you get down every word Patrick Henry says. The colonies need to hear a man like Mr. Henry. We won't let you down, Moses. Good. Are you going to just let him go? <gasps> James, look! His letter! Well, it doesn't take three of us to copy down a speech. And I can barely write my name! True, but you are a world-class sneak. Henri, tail Moses. Keep your distance so he doesn't know he's being followed. But at the first sign of trouble, fly back here and get us. Do you understand? Certainement. Maybe I can't write English, but I understand it plenty. What are you doing with the pencil? Two heads are better than one, especially when one of the heads is yours. But you're not the journalist. Shh, Mr. Patrick Henry. The question before the house is one of awful moment to this country. For my own part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. There is no longer any room for hope. If we wish to be free, if we mean to preserve those privileges for which we have been so long contending, we must fight. I repeat it, sirs, we must fight. An appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that has left us. They tell us we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when shall we be stronger? Will it be next week or next year? We are not weak. We are three million people armed in a holy cause of liberty. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace. But there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from Boston will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? Is life so dear or peace so sweet 
as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. Moses, what are you doing here? Are you crazy? I came to get you, to take you with me to Philadelphia. No, it's too risky. I'm not leaving you here. Don't worry about me. I have a plan. A plan? There is a rumor, a strong rumor from sources that are never wrong. What is it? Lord Dunmore is going to offer freedom to any slave who joins the British to put down the rebellion in Boston. But that's just talk. I'm offering you a way out. You're offering me a life on the run as a fugitive. I want freedom, the freedom every man should have. I'll not spend my life looking over my shoulder, waiting for the bounty hunters to drag me back here in chains. But Moses, I love you. You are a brave man for coming here, but I will not live my life as if I were a criminal when the crime is being committed against me. If I can win my freedom by helping the British, so be it. At least I will be the master of my own fate. Are you sure? I've never been more sure. It's late, what's all that racket? You, get him boys. <gasps> Moses, I've got to get James and Sarah. What does it all mean, James? Is Virginia going to send an army to Boston? Not unless fighting breaks out. But thanks to Patrick Henry, at least Virginia will have an army. The convention voted funds to buy weapons and uniforms and hire officers. This is a great day. James! Sarah! Henri? <laughs> James! Sarah! Quick! Moses has been taken by the plantation men! No! Quick, the wagon! <laughs> yeah! We're coming, Moses! Who is it at this hour of the night? Yes? How may I help you? We're looking for our friend. Moses! His name is Moses! Let him go! What makes you think I have your friend, this Moses character? I saw your form and Everson take him prisoner! The runaway caught stirring up trouble in my slave quarters? That's your friend? Yes, sir. He is our friend. Only Moses is not a runaway. He's a free man. See for yourself. What is this? That is a letter from Dr. Benjamin Franklin of Philadelphia. I am aware of Dr. Franklin, but why is this any of his business? Because, as a man of honor, you have no right to keep that which doesn't belong to you. And this Moses belongs to Dr. Franklin? Moses belongs to himself. Is everything in order, Mr. Abernathy? I heard a wagon roll up. The African named Moses. Where is he? I locked him in the blockhouse. His running days are over. Release him immediately. Release him, but... Now, Harrison, our guests here have a long ride ahead of them, which I suggest you embark on post-haste. So you believe us? If Dr. Franklin is in the business of hiring Africans, that's his concern, not mine. Be off with you. But tell Dr. Franklin he's playing with lightning again. His radical notions about slavery might fly in Philadelphia but he'll set the world on fire if he tries to export them to Virginia. You make sure you tell him that. Oh, we will, sir, we will. We'll be sure to tell him. And then Patrick Henry said, as for me, give me liberty or give me death. That's a mighty fine speech. Good job, James. It's a bunch of hogwash. Hogwash? Sarah, it was greatness. 
all that talk of freedom and liberty? Look what happened to Moses. And what about Cato? Yes, Moses, what about Cato? Look, freedom for slaves who take up arms against the colonists. It's signed by Lord Dunmore for His Majesty King George III. Cato is taking his own path to freedom. If it's God's will, he'll succeed. I believe it is God's will. I believe someday all my people will drink from the cup of liberty, just like Patrick Henry said. Dearest mother, we have returned safely from Virginia, but not without terrible fright, and not without the blinders being lifted from my eyes. Whatever unity Mr. Patrick Henry was able to achieve by bringing the colony of Virginia into the cause with New England, this land shall remain divided as long as slavery remains the law. It is an awful practice, degrading to the slave and to the master. It's an evil that should be stamped from the world wherever it lives. I've learned there are many paths to freedom. Moses took one path, his brother Cato another, just as England and the colonies are traveling different paths. My great fear is these paths are destined to collide. Freedom will not come cheaply. It never does. Your loving daughter, Sarah. <laughs>